let's solve question number 95 now the curved surface area of a cone is half of another right circular cone if the ratio of slant heights is 2 is to 1 and that of volumes is 3 is to 1 find the ratio of the radii and heights so for this question i just need to look at the formula of curved surface area and volume and whatever ratio is given and what we need to find so let's say that the curved surface area of one right circular cone is half of another right circular cone so suppose if there are two cones cone one and cone two cone one's CSA is half the CSA of the second cone so if I look at the ratio CSA of cone 1 is to cone 2 it will be in the ratio 1 is to 2 okay and then the slant height uh, ratio is 2 is to 1 so slant height of first cone L1 slant height of second cone L2 L1 by L2 is 2 by 1 and volume of cone 1 and cone 2 is 3 is to 1 now if I look at the CSA of the cone formula is pi r l r is the radius l is the slant height so let's say csa of cone 1 is pi r1 l1 r1 l1 are the radius and slant height let's assume and csa of cone 2 is pi r2 l2 so ratio of csa is 1 by 2 i'll write here 1 by 2 now ratio of slant height is 2 by 1 so this l1 by l2 is actually 2 by 1 so i can replace that with 2 by 1 and then pi is cancelled so r1 by r2 ratio into 2 by 1 is equal to 1 by 2 then 2 by 1 if i move to the other side i will get 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 that is r1 by r2 will be 1 by 4 so ratio of radii is 1 is to 4 i just need to write in the ratio format 1 is to 4 because they have asked for ratio of the radii okay then looking at the ratio of volume volume is 1 by 3 pi r square h for any cone and again uh, r1 r2 are the ra radius of the two cones h1 and h2 are the heights of the two cones i need the ratio of heights okay so then the volume ratio is 3 by 1 then one third is cancelled pi is cancelled r1 by r2 i already know is 1 by 4 so r1 square by r2 square is 1 by 4 square whole square so 1 by 4 whole square into h1 by h2 is 3 so then h1 by h2 will be if i move 1 by 4 square to the other side 1 by 4 square is same as 1 by 16 so 1 by 16 on the other side is uh, multiplied by 16 so 16 into 3 48 so h1 by h2 is 48 that means the ratio of heights is 48 by 1 or 48 is to 1 then question number 96 uh, they have drawn this entire figure of a truck and some cylindrical drum being unloaded using a plank but it's basically just a right angle triangle that you need to focus on if i mark this as point a this as point b and this as point c the question will tell you that the length of ac is 10 meter and the angle formed uh, in between here which is angle c it is 10 degrees so you need to find the length of um, bc sorry the length of ab which is the height of the um, truck from the ground so they're asking find the height from which the cylindrical drum was rolled down so from point a it was rolled down to point c so the height from which it is rolled down is the vertical height AB. So they're asking what is the length of AB. Okay. So then I can just apply a trigonometric ratio which connects AB and AC. AC is known, AB is unknown and I have my angle 10 degree here. So if I take the ratio of sine, sine of 10 degree will be perpendicular AB by hypotenuse AC. So I will have in the triangle sine 10 degree ab by ac now sine 10 degree i have to look at the trigonometric table so if i look at that i have okay so this is natural science 
10 degree corresponds to this value 0 0.1736 so i will write sin 10 degree as 0 0.1736 that is equal to ab by ac value is 10 so then this 10 i will move here i'll multiply with 10 so ab length is 10 multiplied by this much which is basically 17.36 now the question asked you to give the answer correct to three significant figures 17.36 has 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 significant figures. So if I want to round up to 3, the fourth significant figure is 6, which is more than 5. So when I'm dropping 6, the previous digit, which is 3, I have to add by 1. So my final answer is 17.4 meter, correct to 3 significant figures. Then the next question is from statistics. Um, the data given below shows the marks of 12 students in a test arranged in ascending order. So 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, X, X plus 2, 8, P, Q, 8, 9. Then if the given value of the median and mode is 6 and 8. So median is 6, mode is 8. Find the values of X, P and Q. Okay, so this is a question from... Uh, your array data of median and mode so if i look at the median i have 12 numbers in total which is even so 12 by 2 is 6 so then when you have ascending order of data data arranged in ascending order your median will be the sixth term plus the next one which is seventh term sixth term and the next is seventh term and their average so one two three four five six sixth term is x the next term seventh term is x plus two so the median is the average of x and x plus two so here when i'm calculating median it is average of x and x plus two so x plus x plus x plus two divided by two which comes up to be x plus one so x plus 1 given as median 6. So x value has to be 5. So that is one answer. x is equal to 5. Then they are giving that the mode of the data is 8. If I look at the data, mode means the number occurring the maximum number of times. Uh, now x and x plus 2, I know that x value is 5. So I have 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 5. Then this is 7, 8, then two unknown values, again 8 and 9. Mode is 8. That means 8 has to occur the maximum number of times in the entire data. If I look at 3, 3 is occurring already 3 times. That means if I want to consider 8 as the mode and not 3, 8 has to occur at least more than how much 3 is occurring. So 8 has to occur at least 4 times. If I look at the entire data other than the two missing values, all the other values only have two 8s. So if I need at least four 8s, these two missing numbers should also be 8. So then if I have 8, 8, 8, 8, I have four 8s. And that's the reason why I say mode is 8. So I have to write it somewhat like this. That since mode given is 8, that means 8 has the maximum frequency. And another number 3 already has frequency 3. So 8 must have frequency of at least 4. And that is only possible when both P and Q are 8. Then 8 is the mode. This is the reasoning and this is the answer. P and Q are both 8. Then the next question is from inequations. Solve the linear inequation. Write down the solution set and represent on the number line. So this is the inequation given and x belong to r. Replacement set is real numbers. So when I solve it, I can split the two inequations and then solve it in two parts. So in one part, I have 5 into 2 minus 4x greater than 18 minus 16x. So then I have 5 into 2, 10 minus 20x greater than 18 minus 16x. I'm moving the minus 20x to the other side and 18 to this side so 10 minus 18 is greater than 20x minus 16x so i get minus 8 greater than 4x 
so minus 2 is greater than x or I can say x is less than minus 2 this is one part of the solution and at the same time I also have 18 minus 16 x is greater than 22 minus 20 x so if I um, simplify and solve that I get let's say 18 I'm moving this side and minus 20 I'm moving this side so 20 x minus 16 x is giving me uh, greater than 22 minus 18 4 x greater than 4 so x greater than 1 now the inequation was this combined inequation this greater than this greater than this so x has to be a value which satisfies both the inequations so i have on one side x is less than minus 2 and x is greater than 1 so if i combine that x less than minus 2 and x greater than 1 x is a real number there is actually no real number which is satisfying both of these values of x at the same time so when i write my solution set it is actually x such that x is less than minus 2 and x is greater than 1 x belong to real numbers but when i think about it there is actually no value of x for which this is true at the same time so my solution set is actually an empty set or a null set but uh, for some reason the question uh, the answer given at the document at the back is actually saying that the answer the solution set is um, like this solution set is x such that x less than minus 2 or x greater than 1 x belong to real numbers but here or means it can be either x equal to minus 2 or x greater than 1 but if i take only x less than minus 2 it satisfies only one part of the inequation not the entire inequation i wanted a solution set which is going to satisfy the entire inequation at the same time so according to me this is incorrect okay moving ahead to the next question question is if a polynomial this cubic polynomial leaves a remainder minus 6 when divided by x plus 1 and the same polynomial has x minus 2 as a factor find the values of a and b so this is a sort of a common question we have seen this before um, either in your book or in your previous years papers okay so let's say that the cubic polynomial is f of x then they said that x plus 1 leaves a remainder of minus 6 so x plus 1 is 0 when x equal to minus 1 if i substitute x equal to minus 1 in the cubic polynomial and evaluate then the result should be minus 6 which is the remainder so if i evaluate that by substituting x equal to minus 1 i get some equation like this a plus b is minus 7 and they said that x minus 2 is a factor of the polynomial so if I substitute x equal to 2, then the polynomial should evaluate to 0. So f of 2 should be 0. And if I substitute x equal to 2, I get another equation, uh, which is 2a minus b equal to 16. Then equation 1 and 2, I can solve it whichever way and then find out the solution. So I'm getting the value of a equals to 3 and b equals to minus 10 then moving ahead to the next question it is from matrices okay given four matrices a b c and d they're asking is the product ac possible justify your answer find matrix x such that x is equal to a b plus b square minus dc so let's look at the first part is a into c possible so I need to look at the order of matrix A and matrix C. Matrix A has two rows and two columns. So order is two by two. Matrix C has only one row and two columns. So the order is uh, one by two, one row and two columns. Now number of columns of A is two, number of rows of C is one, which are unequal. So I can say that AC product is not possible. And the reason will be that the number of 
columns of A is not equal to the number of rows of C. Whenever I need uh, to multiply two matrices, the product is only possible only if the number of columns of first matrix is equal to number of rows in the second matrix. So that's the answer for the first part that no, it's not possible because of that reason. Number of columns of A not equal to number of rows of C. So not possible. Then if I want to find matrix X such that it's AB plus B, B, B square minus DC, um, because there are at least three matrix multiplications going on, I can evaluate AB separately, B square separately and DC separately. And then at the end, I will add and subtract. That will be convenient. So I'm taking first A into B. Matrix A into B, if I'm doing it, I'm getting this matrix. So 2 by 2 matrix and 2 by 2 matrix, it's possible to multiply. Then I will get four elements or 2 by 2 matrix. First row, first column if I focus, minus 1 into 1 plus 3 into 0, which comes up to be minus 1. Then minus 1 into uh, minus 2 plus 3 into 3, that comes up to be 11. 2 into 1 plus 0 into 0 is 2. 2 into minus 2 plus 0 into 3 is minus 4. So this is matrix AB. Next, we have to find what is matrix B square. B square is always B into B. It's not simply squaring each element. Uh, you should not do that mistake. Okay, so if I have B into B, just write the matrix two times. Then again, 2 by 2 matrix uh, multiplied by itself will result in a 2 by 2 matrix. So four elements. First element is 1 into 1 plus minus 2 into 0, which is just 1. Then 1 into minus 2 plus minus 2 into 3, which is minus 8. Then 0 into 1 plus 3 into 0 is 0. 0 into minus 2 plus 3 into 3 is 9. So B square matrix, I am getting this. Then I have another matrix DC. Now D matrix has order 2 by 1. And matrix C has order 1 by 2. It is possible to multiply and the resulting matrix will have order 2 by 2. Four elements. So then first element is 4 into 1, 4. Another is 4 into minus 4, minus 16. So these are the row 1 elements. Then for row 2 elements, 1 into 1, which is 1, 1 into minus 4 is minus 4. So this is the matrix DC, 2 by 2 matrix. And then finally, matrix X is AB plus B square minus DC. So this plus this minus this. So I need to get the four elements. First is minus 1 plus 1 minus 4. I get minus 4. 11 plus minus 8 minus minus 16 is 19. 2 plus 0 minus 1 is 1. Minus 4 plus 9 minus minus 4 is 9. So this is the final matrix X. Let's continue the other questions in the remaining parts.